I'm Zach Dillon. Hope you're having a great day, friends. I do have a very special guest with me on the phone right now. He's got a show coming to Dubuque here on April 17th. That is next month at the Diamond Joe Casino. I'm with WWE Hall of Famer Jake the Snake Roberts. Hey, Jake, how's it going? It's doing great, man. So I do want to ask you real quick, have you been to Dubuque before? Because I'm pretty sure this isn't the first time I've heard your name on radio commercials. No, I, I've been there before, sure. Yeah, okay. in the day, you know, <laughs> there weren't many places we didn't go. All right, and you're looking forward to coming back? Absolutely, man. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the fans and uh, talking to them. I, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this tour, man. I like to get out there and talk to the fans and uh, hear their stories about back in the day when they were watching wrestling, maybe with their granddad, granddad or, or maybe their dad or whoever, mm-hmm. and just Re, you know, give me a count of about what was going on in their lives back then, and uh, it just for me it makes it seem like yeah, you know, it was worth it, man. Because uh, if they still remember after all those years, then I must have been doing something right. So I just want to say I'm a little too young to maybe re- remember your wrestling career. I'm only 24, so I don't really know oh, a, a right. whole lot about yeah. that. But no, I just wanted to ask well, you. I just wanted yeah, to ask you kind care, of about that. Cuba Care will start soon. Don't worry about it. You know, you'll be okay. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about your wrestling career. Like, how did you start? When did you start? Oh, my God. I started <laughs> a long damn time ago, man. And I did it for the wrong reasons, you know. I I was angry at my father, and uh, he was a wrestler, and uh, he wouldn't give me the time of day. And uh, so I decided I was going to do what he did and be better than he was. And, you know, I did all those things, but uh, in the end, it didn't change the way he was, you know. And... Uh, I paid a heavy price for it because I went down some wrong roads along the way and uh, beat myself up and tortured myself and tortured my family. And uh, but I've learned a lot, <laughs> and uh, in that learning, I've uh, been able to turn it around and uh, clean and sober now for seven years. And uh, wow, no, that, yeah. that's great. That's great. Yeah, I never, I never thought it would have happened, man. And, uh, but it was close not to happening, and. Uh, Buddy of mine shaved my rear end, and um, since then I've been out doing what I want to do and uh, enjoying life and um, come up with the idea of this show where I could get back around the fans and, and, and thank them for supporting me for all those years. and Even when they didn't know that I was struggling in life, uh, they were behind me 100%, and I really do appreciate it, man. And, uh, so now to go back around and tell these crazy stories, I mean, some of these stories, man, are going to blow your minds. I promise you that. You're just going, oh, my God, those guys were crazy. Yeah, <laughs> we were crazy. You know, we were we were running hard. We were running fast, and uh, we played hard. We played fast. And, uh, you know, I've checked the statute of limitations on most of the stories, and I'm, I'm clear on those, so I can go ahead and tell them. But uh, it's a blast. We have a great time doing the show, and uh, <clears throat> I open it up for a Q and A at the end of the show, and uh, that way you can ask the questions that you've always been afraid to ask anybody else. So you'll have that opportunity, and there'll be time before the show to take pictures and buy merch or whatever you want to do, man. We're just going to have a great time doing it. Yeah, sounds sounds like a cool show, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about your Dirty Details tour, which is coming to yeah, the man. Mississippi Moon Bar. So I've never seen the show, and I know there's probably people out there who have never seen the show either. So what can somebody expect to, you know, hear? Oh, my God. Everything from Andre the Giant to, to Macho Man. I do impersonations of some of the guys, <laughs> and... uh it's just the stories are just insane. You know, I was on Joe Rogan here a while back, and uh, mm-hmm. Joe Rogan was just shaking his head and crying. <laughs> oh uh, he was laughing so hard, man. It's some of the crazy stuff guys do. You know, you put you put twenty or thirty athletes in a locker room. You know, stuff's going to happen. Oh, oh, of course. You know, and uh, most of it wasn't nice. You know, and uh, you, you throw in a fifteen foot python in my in, in my corner and. Uh, <laughs> We kind of rule the roost, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. sometimes that python would show up in the craziest of places, you know, whether it be uh, coming over the top of a toilet <laughs> while you're sitting on it and uh, the door is locked and you can't get out and, oh, my God, and, or you might, that, that snake <laughs> might appear in a strip joint and things happen there, too. And uh, there, there was always something going on. And, 
you know, I was in, in wrestling for 36 years, so I have a lot to pull from. You know, I get a lot of information stuck back that uh, keeps coming out. And uh, the reason it keeps coming out is because I'm out here on the road. And, uh, you know, I go to these towns that I haven't been to in a long time, and uh, then all of a sudden something will click in my head, you know. And it's like, oh, my God, I forgot about that one, you know. And they're doing their story coming out, so... It's a necessity for me to get out here and beat the bushes, man, and find those stories. Now, do you find yourself to be like a natural storyteller? Is this easy for you yeah. to do? Yeah, it's easy, man. I don't have to think about anything. I just get up there and go, man, and that's what makes it so nice. You know, after all the years of being in the ring and, uh, you know, being, being hit in the head way too many times, <laughs> too many concussions and all that, uh, you know, I was having some problems with my speech and uh, with my memory and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I've started doing this, it's helped. It's helped immensely, man. It really has, and uh, I'm so grateful for it. So, you know, it's the best of both worlds for me. I get to go out here and do something I like, uh, be around people that like me, and um, man, how much better can it get? I don't know, and get paid for it. What the <laughs> hell? I'll do that exactly. So <laughs> you know, I'm a whore. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so were you, uh, I guess, friends with many of the people that you wrestled with? Were you friends outside the ring too? Nah, you know, in those days, man, it was a dog eat dog world, man. And uh, unfortunately, in, in, in athletics, there's a lot of jealousy involved. And uh, if you happen to be one of the fortunate ones that are blessed um, athletically and on the mic like I was, there's going to be a lot of haters out there, you know, in the locker room, man. There's uh, some jealous bones in there, man. And sometimes those bones got busted up, and uh, there you'll have some of those stories, too. Was the snake always part of your, your gimmick, or did that come into play over time? Yeah, it came into play over time. For years, nobody let me do it. Um, you know, and then I went to the WWF back in those days, right. and uh, they were all for it, man. And uh, we jumped on board, and uh, it really grabbed it grabbed people's imagination, and that's what it was about, you know, getting people interested and getting people to see what the hell I'd do next. Because <laughs> I never knew what I was going to do next. I'll tell you that right now. But I am looking forward to coming to Dubuque, man, and I uh, hope you guys come out. Come out early and uh, so we have time to take photos with everybody and have a good time. I want to hear your stories. I do want to ask you, uh, too, since we're on the topic of your snake, uh, my dad actually texted me this question because I told him I was going to be talking uh, to you today. <laughs> was Damien your snake or did that belong no, to somebody else? No, no, I, I didn't. Have, I didn't know any of them. I used there were about 40 different Damien. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They only lasted about a week on the road, and they had to go rest for a couple of months. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, a snake only lasted a week on the road, yet I could go out there for three months. Go figure that. <laughs> wow. I do want to ask you, too, about, we know that King Kong Bundy passed away yeah. recently. Do you yeah. ha Are you going to be telling any stories about him, maybe, now that he, I don't know. he recently you know, passed? That's, or? that's still pretty raw right now, okay. you know, and... Uh, it is harder and harder every day that goes by, man, when, when another one drops. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was only 61 years old, man, and uh, I'm 63, so that kinda, that's not a nice thing, you know, and right. it's still pretty raw right now. I, I'm sure by showtime I'll come up with a Bundy story just to honor him, but right now it's just a little too raw to think about. Right. <clears throat> and anything else you want to add here uh, before I let you go today? No, bro, let's just have a good time, and I uh, hope it warms up before I get there. Yeah, it is pretty cold. Might not hurt to pack an extra coat or something with you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, tickets to, yeah, tickets to the Dirty Details Tour at the Mississippi Moon Bar are available now. You can get those at the Moon Bar box office. I want to say thank you, Jake, for taking time out of your day to speak with me. Oh, sweet, man. You guys take care of yourself. God bless.